in Arizona, man. Y'all y'all flew all the way down here. So I'm very appreciative, man. I, you know, the first time I saw you on social media and uh, on YouTube, I said, the first time I saw you, I think you made a video and it wasn't even like a conservative related video. And But I, I was like, man, that dude real. It, it, even if I agree with what he said or not, I feel like he real, yeah. keeping it real. Yeah. And then it's like the second video I saw was some conservative where you were like, I don't forget what video it was, but you were saying something about some conservative stuff. Yeah. And I go, a homeboy conservative. <laughs> yeah. So you know what I'm saying? I think, you know, I'm going to keep following him. And, and every time I look at your stuff, I'm like, man, this dude, you know, he, he remind me of myself. And so that's one reason why I'm excited to, you know, talk to you, chop it up a little bit. Yeah. But I want to start at the beginning, bro, because, you know, we obviously talked before this um, and you said that you weren't always you didn't always have the same perspective you have now. You didn't always have the conservative perspective. So can you can you explain, you know, kind of where you started and how it evolved? Man, I probably have the, the typical black experience. You know what I'm saying? Like. Um, grew up de- very culturally influenced, living in that little black block, that black box, you know what I'm saying? Thinking that, you know, it's just hard, or extremely hard out here for every black man. Um, and really what it was that woke me up was like doing the YouTube stuff, bro, because it gave me an opportunity to listen to other people outside of my own people. You know what I mean? Because, you know, birds of a feather flock together. It's always you know, sheep mentality, herd mentality, right? If I'm if I'm living and experiencing it and seeing my homeboys doing the same thing, it's all it's all I'm receiving, bro. So like YouTube, bro, it it like it opened it up and let me talk to everybody, white, black, you know, gay, straight, trans, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Opened all that up and then listening to everybody's perspective on on our lifestyles, what I, I mean black people, uh it really, it really made me feel small, man. It made me feel like a victim. It made me feel like, like, um, like I wasn't living in reality, bro. It's like, it's like because, because, like the real shit, bro. I, I know you're gonna be cussing. No, no, we will. We'll, but um, we'll it. I, I, I compare it to anything else, like racism, feminism, sexism, all that, bro. Like, like feminism, for example, bro. Like feminist movement, they, they're really emotionally tied to how they see the world. It's hard to get them outside of that. Especially with the black experience, you're really emotionally tied to how we see the world. And if you've seen anything that opposes how I feel about my life, then you the enemy. And then you can't you can't look at the world that way. Like if you if you allow emotion to dictate your actions, you can't look at anything look at anything rationally. And black folks typically don't look at anything rationally when it comes to like big big yeah. problems. Oh, they you know, they gonna be mad at you for saying but, that. But bro. that's real though, dog. It's real, bro. Like for like if. Ah, I must start going out, start going there, bro. So like, for example, like the media will run with, you know, a, a, a black person get shot in some type of way, right? The whole narrative is the black person got shot. They don't tell you why the black person got shot, right? So if you, if you leave that part out of why this man got shot, and you only focus on the black, the black man got shot, it's all emotion. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, why did he get, why did he get shot? Or he just robbed this person. He did this. That, that don't matter. Just the fact that he got, the fact that he's black is all that matters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but yeah, bro, like, and so just, that was, yeah, just, just talking to people, man, just opened my eyes. It made me, it made me, it made me feel weak. It made me feel small. It made me feel like I wasn't taking advantage of every opportunity I was given. It made me feel like a damn victim. It made me feel like, like I've been wasting time. I could have been much more successful a long time when I once I lifted that veil up. And then, you know, it's a hard position for us to be in because like I want to give this type of perspective and mind state to mind state to other black folks, but they don't want to hear it. Oh, bro. They don't want to <laughs> they don't want to hear, hear it, bro. They don't want to hear it, bro. I I had a, a conversation with a dude on my IG the other night, bro. Like an hour we were talking. He called me a white supremacist. He said only white supremacists follow me. I'm kissing the white man, you know what? I mean, it just like, and I, and, I, and I went through methodically and I said, bro, do you believe that fathers in the home is important? He go, yeah. I said, do you believe that a brother selling drugs to another brother is a problem? Well, yeah, but, but, you know, he want to go back in history and all that yeah. stuff. I said, but no, do we agree to that? Yeah, we agree on that. I'm like, bro, so what is your problem with me when I say these things are a problem and I, and I talk about them? Why you got to beef with me and think I'm a white supremacist when you believe the same thing I'm saying? Yeah. But it, it, it's unfortunately, I don't know why black folks have a hard time hearing it, especially from other brothers that, that are telling you like, bro, I used to think like this, 
and now I think differently. And then it's like, there's nothing you can tell anyone to, to shift that perspective for them. It's like religion. It's like, they got to go through something themselves to realize it. Like if I were to talk to myself three years ago, give myself this perspective I got now, I'm like, break it the hell out of my face. <laughs> it don't matter what you would have said to me. I, like I was literally the opposite, dog. Bro, real shit, I'm gonna tell you, tell you a story, bro. Before I was even in a YouTube, but I was aware of you. Yeah. When I lived on the other side of the damn fence and I watched your videos, like, man, fuck this motherfucker. <laughs> Bro, that's how I was, dog. That's how I was, bro. Like, man, turn this clown off. I ain't trying to hear none of this. You know what I'm saying? And then fast forward it, yo, know, two years, bro, and I see the the see it the same way you see it, bro. And then it's like, like there's nothing you can tell somebody that's living it and breathing it to get them to open their eyes, bro, because they're in their own way. But I mean, I get it. It's, 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 you know, brainwashing. If your family's saying it, your friends saying it, your work saying it, the media saying it, yeah. everybody's saying it. And something must be wrong with me for, you know, bucking the system. Yeah. But that, but they don't, they want us to live in that world, but because it, it pays to keep us there. It pays to keep us in this little black box, not allowing us to know how much strength and just freedom we really got. You know what I'm saying? It's frustrating, bro. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. That's funny you said that because. <laughs> Bro, I used to think the same thing about dudes. Like, um, it was a dude named James T. Harris. Yeah. He, he's a big time radio guy here in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And James T. Harris had a radio show. I was a cop at the time. And uh, I was in a unmarked car that because I was a PIO. So I was a public information officer. They let mm -hmm. me take a take home car. Yeah. Because sometimes I had to pull up on the scene and talk to the media. So, you know, it ain't got no DVD player. I mean, no, no, no radio in there mm -hmm. except for the regular, regular FM, AM. And so I used to just flip through and I heard him because he black. I wanted mm -hmm. to listen to what he had to say, bro. He was trashing Obama. Yeah. Like, I mean, the whole show trashing mm -hmm. Obama, bro. And I hated him. Bro. I was like, man, this bro, this bro, Uncle Tom, yeah. he a sellout because Barack Obama this, Barack Obama that. I couldn't see it. And now me and him are really good friends. But mm -hmm. like, bro, I was the same way. It's, it's funny because I think when, when, when black people wake up, it's almost like 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 religion yeah it's like you go from darkness to light you go from like i ain't a christian i don't believe in god and none of that and then you have this experience where you like like a light switch come on you're like dang there is a god or, or i believe in god man i, I really want to start going to church and doing yeah. things right yeah. same thing with being black it's like dang i've been lied to yeah like they are they still out here telling us that the white man have a different set of rules than we have mm -hmm. the banker give a loan to a white man but not a black man and it's, it's super cap. Yeah. Because see, you you experience it yourself. Yeah. A bank ain't, ain't, ain't discriminating against you. Mm -hmm. you, you. You running it up. As long as you got the qualifications, bro, no matter what this is. Right. And they, they don't, bro, because you know what I what I look at it is this. Like when I went and got I bought my first house, I felt like they were overly mm -hmm. wanting to give a black man an opportunity. And because yeah. they got a quota to get. And mm -hmm. then so so they want they were willing to give me an opportunity. My first house was free. Yeah. Uh, well, not free, I didn't have no down payment on it because I had a USDA loan or whatever for unincorporated areas. And then mm -hmm. I was a first time home buyer and uh, my credit score was good. I think it was like a 620 or something at the mm -hmm. time. And my credit score is much better now, but it was like a 620. I only needed that to be approved. Yeah. And they got me in a house turned around, boom. And then I went and sold it. Like I had no problems. Yeah. The bank didn't discriminate against me. I had a good interest rate at the time. It's like, it, it's, it's all a, a myth, bro. And I don't understand why black people fall for it so hard like they do i don't but i don't think that it's not their fault though because you're born into it like you're you're initially programmed to look at the world a certain way as soon as you come up you know what i'm saying like i i couldn't have these conversations that i'm having with you with you know close family and friends because their religion is different than mine now mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like i'm 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 buddhist and they something else yeah yeah right okay. and that's that's what it is and i i, I don't know it's going to take an, an experience of them to to open their eyes, man. man. Like I say, YouTube afforded me the opportunity to just take in other people's perspectives. Because I was of the mind state of pride, like, man, if you ain't black, you can't, you can't, you can't relate to what what I'm going through. I don't want to hear. It. You know what I'm saying? Before they even utter a word, I don't want to hear it because you ain't black. And then I, and I and I'm acting like you know I'm out here getting put on by the cops every damn day. You know what I'm saying? Getting put on hoods. And, and man, I've had I've had my share of struggles, but it ain't. I'm sure it ain't is is no more than anybody else's share of struggles. It ain't just solely because of this. You know, I'm a big black dude. I got tax. I, I mean, you know what I'm saying like I can see how that could come across. You know, uh, uh, 
um, it could re- it could be responded to differently according to who's coming to approach me or whatever, man. But like, um, yeah, I wasn't I, I wasn't like somebody somebody out here getting victimized every day, but I was holding that with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like black folks are empowered by that struggle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's it's contradictory, it's counterproductive. Like, how are you empowered by struggle, bro? We should be empowered by the fact that we can go out here and do what we want to do. Go out here and get it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's like. When we when we allow when we allow ourselves to be victimized, it allows us to be complacent, it allows us to be lazy, it allows us to be like, you know, rely on other people to fix it for us, allow uh, allows for like pity parties and things of that nature, man. And it I the more I think about it, I just it makes me feel bad for us, bro, because you know, everybody else looking at us like, man, they just don't get it, bro. Bro, they just don't get it, dog. I've had so many of my, you know white people, friends that I, I, I rock with. They're going to be honest with me. White friends, white people, you know, you know Hispanics, whatever, uh, Nigerian, whatever. They'll tell me how black folks look. And they know I got an open mind now. I can receive that information and not get irritated. But I'm like, you're right, dog. You're right. Because we, and, it, and it, it's, 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 it's messed up because I know black folks can't help it. They just, it's just the situations that we find ourselves in, we're born into, man. But, ah. Uh, I know it's 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 uh it, it's it's really because I look at because now I'm out of the bubble. Bro. Yeah, I'm not like I'm pro black, pro black. Yeah. So I look at black folks and I'm like, I see stuff coming across TV, bro, and I'm like, man, I'm sick of black folks doing this. Yeah. I know it's not all, mm-hmm. but it's just the ones that do the it. They're annoying, bro. Yeah. They're annoying, bro. It was it was something said that like uh you know organize your pantry is racist. Yeah, I mean just all this stuff, and you're like, bro, if I I'm black, so I'm, I, I guess I could say I'm a little biased because mm-hmm. I, and I can say I understand what it's like to be black. I used to feel that way and I changed. Some people that ain't never grew up like that and changed, they probably looking at black folks like, y'all the most ungrateful, ignorant people in America. Mm-hmm. And, and I'll tell you this, bro. Black people could actually run this country. Look at all of the, I'm saying run it, meaning that the influence that black people have that they don't know they have. The, the the most prominent music athletes. is hip hop music. Athletes, actors, entertainment, swag, the culture, culture bro. The culture, bro. The and, amount of money we spend, bro. And, and if and if we were if we were understand and be like, oh man, we we ain't, we ain't any different than anybody else. I'm gonna go out and get it. Yeah. Or if they really want to be pro black, then say. Why, why don't all the billionaire black people just operate out of a black owned bank? Facts. Why why don't when, when somebody come out with a shoe, stop buying Louis yes. and, 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 and I'll put it into what his brother doing with his shoe? Because bro, I'm telling you, like if if, if like Jay-Z or somebody came out with a shoe, they so popular, bro, every single black person on planet Earth knows who Jay-Z is. If he came out with a shoe and all the celebrities were like, I invest in it or whatever, and we just buy his shoe. Mm-hmm. And all black people just buy black people stuff. It could happen, bro. But but it's the it's we the, damn near had that with uh, Kanye with his Yeezys. Yeah, Yeezys. Yeah. But then you know he got canceled, yep. and then yep. black folks don't want to step up for Yeezys yep. because when he start talking about Jewish people, they got canceled. Yep. He got canceled, and everybody's scared to say nothing. Yep. I, I stood up for some of the stuff he said because some of the stuff he said was actually facts. Yeah, it wasn't just you know racism or prejudice. It was facts. Yeah, you talk about Jewish people owning a, a lot of. Uh, uh, record labels it's and running fact. the industry. It's a fact. Mm-hmm. They've been talking about this forever. Yes. Dr. Dre, uh, everybody been talking about this it, it's for the entire history of rap music. And now all of a sudden, yay. And then and what do they do? Cancel. They all them. scared. Yeah. Like, like when Kyrie came out, Kyrie said, look, I'm standing up for my rights. Uh, I don't want to have to take the jab. You know, LeBron them ain't, even, mm-hmm. ain't got his back mm-hmm. like they, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. we, we try to act like we pro-black not us, but I'm saying generally mm-hmm. speaking, black people try to act like they pro-black, but they don't even support black businesses. Mm-hmm. They don't even, you, I, I guarantee you, you go down a list and you look at the lawyers that represent LeBron. You look at people that are real estate agents. You look at, at their agents. You look at all this stuff. I guarantee you they don't have a lot of a black folks. Yep. If, they, if, if they could, but they don't. Yep. They tell us, they tell us, oh man, you know, the white man, white supremacy, white privilege, and they making money with white folks. Yep. They like like uh it's your boy hip, Colin Kaepernick. It's like hip hypocrisy. Yeah. S- super hypocrisy. Yeah. So let me let me let me jump into something else, cause uh you and I are both fathers. Mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah, I don't want to put your business out there. You probably, your business probably out yeah. there. You got one on the way. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to have, you're going to have two boys. Five times. Two, two boys. Yeah, two boys. I got two boys. Yeah. One 12, and then I got a two year old. Yeah. Uh, people can guess how that happened. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so I got two boys. You got two boys. And our sons are coming up in a generation of absolute foolery. Not only is the wussification of men a thing, but the sexualization of children is a big problem. So, you know, what's your thoughts, bro, on like homeschooling your kids versus putting them in school? What's your fears, you know, with your kids getting exposed to all this LGBTQ Man, stuff? That's probably my biggest concern that I have society wise as a whole is the the agenda and how it's influenced our children. And I, I, I feel that way because I'm a father. Right, like we just talked about, you know, the, the I don't know, the black experience. And that bothers me a lot because I feel like that will, you know, help the black community so much more if they, if they, if they were allowed to take in the perspective we have. But being a father, man, my, like my biggest concern is keeping my, my children away from all this liberal, progressive bullshit. And I mean, it's and it's it's it's, it's almost like a, an impossible feat at this point, man. Because social media is is the the biggest enemy. Like I can try to have my boys, you know, North Dakota somewhere, man. As long as they got a phone or some some internet or something, up, they're gonna be susceptible susceptible to the influence, man. I don't want my little boys knowing about trans, nothing about sexual, nothing, none of that, bro. And it, and it and it puts us in an impossible situation where it's like. Like what are we what what are we supposed to do? Right. What right. are we supposed to do? Right. You know, and and it's weird, bro, because it used to not be like this. Not at all. I, I think like ten years ago. I mean, not even that long ago, bro. It happened I, like that. Overnight. I say ten years ago, or when we were in school, mm. I ain't never heard of a transgender, mm. bro. I mean, you had some people that were, you know, kind of like tomboys, like girls that like kind of a little rougher. And, and when I was in school, when I was in high school, we had like one gay dude at our school. I mean, he was super flamboyant. Yeah. But it was all black school. Yeah. So he was super flamboyant, good child carrying a purse and all that stuff. It was one dude though. Yeah. And it wasn't really, you know, because he'll fight and stuff and mm -hmm. the women liked him, he was he was all right. Everybody cool. just accepted it. But bro, now, bro, every other kid is a LGBTQ something. Yeah. And my youngest son, Bo, we we're not gonna put him in school. We're yeah. gonna homeschool him because we have to be able to manage what he getting exposed to. Um, but I, but I, I feel like it's it's it, I'm I'm gonna do my due diligence, man. But it's to, it's to the point where like like I don't got no issue with no gay trans. I don't got nothing. I don't got an issue yeah. with them. You know what I'm saying? But it's like it's trendy to be that way. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And. If this is you, that's cool. But I don't want my boys, or if I had girls, experimenting in any of that because they see it in front of their face. Kids imitate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you got people out here thinking that it's cool and and it's hip to be gay or be trans or identify as a damn hippo and shit, I don't, I don't, I don't want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's that's how it is. It's literally trendy to be that way, bro. And like, and that's now, bro. Yeah. Kids is little now. Imagine. Five, six, seven, eight years from now, is it gonna get worse? Yeah, absolutely. Like, what is it? What's gonna happen? Like, are we gonna are we gonna wake up one day, and seventy percent of the teachers are like trans? Mm. Like, are we gonna are we gonna wake up in ten years, bro? And like every female record is 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 have been broken mm. and is dinged by a transgender, bro? Are we gonna are we gonna wake up one day? And you know, Sports Illustrated magazine is gonna feature nothing but trans people, like a whole trans, a uh, 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 whole book full of it. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, it, it it can't be that many people in this country that's trans. I, I think in my whole life, I can count on one hand how many people. Not unless they just pass when I miss them, yeah. but I can count on one hand how many people that I either know that are trans or that I actually seen in person. I'm like, that's a trans person. Mm -hmm. I could probably count on maybe one one or two hands. Out of, out of hundreds of thousands of people that I've probably seen have been exposed to in my entire life. And so it can't be that many people that's doing this, but the, it's, a, it's, the a, it's a thing, bro. And you know what makes it so bad too is that like, I'm, I'm sure the trans community has, you know, fought tooth and nail to, to be where they are now. They just want to live, you know, like their lives and be unbothered and shit. But this radical ass 
you know, trans agenda is opposing you know, their their livelihood, man. Cause they, these motherfuckers that are all loud, rah, rah, shaking it, shaking everything up is making it, you know, terrible for them. Yeah. So we so we sitting here and paint everybody, like generalize all these trans, include them in this bubble, which is unfair to them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like I can see it from from both sides. I know as far as me being a father. I'm going, I'm living selfishly. I don't want none of that shit around my, around my children at all, man. But I can empathize as well for those who like, bro, we just want to live in peace. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just leave us alone. We just want to live in peace. But you know, you know, the, the uh, big tech CEOs, whatever, they trying to, you know, chase that dollar and, you know, get kids hooked up on all types of, you know, gender affirmation, this and, and, and gender re read surgery that or whatever man it's all about the damn dollar at the end of the day bro that that dylan mulvaney uh food that i saw earlier um was it real that dylan mulvaney was featured on a bud a bud light can or was know. that an april food joke i i, I don't know I don't or was know. that a commercial oh, to april Fool's? i don't even know what you're talking about i just know who he is because he's he's like the most popping bro out right now bro it's gotta be a thing bro that, that that's got to be a, a, a they they doing something with that because this person was a gay dude and he was on talk shows. I yeah. mean, he was like on Lou Reed yeah, playing show. woman face. Yeah, and then and then all of a sudden, bro, this dude all over the place done had a whole uh, series of every day that he played like a girl. Mm-hmm. He he literally making fun of women, carrying around tampons. The fool been a girl for like. 60 days or so and end up interviewing the president of the United States of America and then turn around, had a whole whole special with the 365 days of being a, a, a girl doing all of this sexually perverted stuff. Now the little Bud, Bud Light thing. And I'm like, my wife think it's real. And I'm like, what? Like, is somebody deaf in the room? Bud Light is a man's drink, bro. Dudes are slamming them back. What dude want a tranny on a Bud Light can, bro? bro but that's the what dude though. is like, bro? This sexy right here. Like, I, I want to hold this drink with this with this trans mentally ill dude on a, on a can. And women can't, and a real woman can't get on a can, bro. Yeah. They, they put a trans on a can. I, man, boy, I, all I, bro, all of it is the end of, end goal. End goal is the pussification of men, like you said, the wussification of men, making men softer, women harder. Making us easier to control. That's where they. That's where. That's where. That's where it's all going. Yeah, you know I mean, they they fear men like us. That's why we need to empower men to be up here. Empower women too to be up here and, and speak their thoughts and 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 you know try to not be so terrified by cancel culture. But rightfully so, you should be terrified because everybody doesn't have a like. We can still get told by cancel culture if you yeah. push it too far. But um, I, I, that's what I think the overall goal is with all this stuff is to control men because you cut our nuts off we can't do nothing right and then empower women to feel like they damn men which is causes even more chaos right and then and then then there go the destruction of the family yeah because the man feel disempowered he's not taking his rightful position and when men don't feel empowered that that, that leads to depression yep. suicide loneliness worthlessness men have to have value there was a there was a podcast that I was watching where they had gave a scenario of some men who were mute, and I thought mm-hmm. this is a man maybe in another mute? country. They were mute. They wouldn't talk. Yeah. They just were done talking. They were they they were just so depressed. They were just isolated, isolate themselves. They wouldn't talk to nobody. They just depressed. I mean, to the point of death, they had to be hospitalized. They like in a home, mm-hmm. like in a mental institute. Yeah. And so they had like this uh, some war or some had happened. And they needed ambulance to be transported and nobody could do it because like I think a bunch of people got killed or something like that. And they were saying that those men were reinvigorated when they had purpose. They had purpose. And they gave a purpose. All they had to do is drive these trucks over to another place to get the ambulance to a certain point and they mm-hmm. came alive. Bro, and I think that anybody that understand the psychology of hum- the human existence of men understand that if a man feel disempowered, he begin to crumble. If a man don't feel like he has purpose, if he's not leading anything, he's not going anywhere, he feel, you know, like, uh, you know, disempowered. So therefore he become depressed. And if they keep a man depressed, then therefore a man is not in his rightful position as a father, as a leader in the community. Nope. And then women get all 
they chest pumped up and they want to be the man. Mm -hmm. And then women Chaos. have a desire to raise children and to be moms and to be nurturing and mm -hmm. you force them into a masculine setting. Now they crazy. Yeah. Now they, they, they don't live a fulfilled life. Yeah. All right, man, I, I want to I want to touch base with you on a, on a concept because you, you bring up a very interesting point. And I feel like most people, even people that, that claim to be conservative, they're afraid to touch on this and have an open minded perspective. You make an incredible point, in my opinion, when it comes to marriage. Yeah. So I'm married. Um, you know, when I met Corinne, my wife, I said, you know what, this is the woman I want to marry. I believe in traditional marriage. Um, and even though I hate the government for the most part, um, it, it, it kind of meant a lot to me to have an official marriage where it was legally we're married, our name changed. Um, we went to the courthouse, we made it all official, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, but you have a different perspective, yeah. you know, obviously you believe that. Uh, fathers in a, in a nuclear family relationship is important, same way I do. Mm -hmm. But the actual government intervention in marriage is where we think differently. So, yeah. what, what's your thoughts on on marriage? I just I disagree with the institution of it right now. Um, I, I don't want the government to have anything to do with my union. With I don't want them to have anything to do with my relationship as as a whole, right? Um, like the nuclear family, you know, by definition, you just need the mother and father present with the child. They don't have to be married to do that. But both of them are in the household. You can have a your your you know your typical nuclear family, man. But just you know all the stats that are out there that like if you I use this example a lot. Like if you were to place a bet on marriage, not you, but your typical marriage, would you bet your mortgage that that damn marriage is gonna last? You know what I'm saying? Chances are it's probably not. And the way the institution of marriage is done right now, it tends to leave men at the point of disadvantage most of the time because there's so much gender bias in paternity court, so much gender bias in marriage law. There's, there's, gen, there's gender bias all over the place. So, um, yeah, my my problem with marriage is just the government being involved. And, I, and me and my girl are on the same page as this as well. Like. We will put what marriage looks like together for us and do it our own way outside of, you know, your typical, you know, traditional marriage, man. Because it, 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 like the society doesn't treat it the same, man. Like marriage doesn't seem like it's uh, as important as it used to be. You know what I mean? And I think women are nowadays are still, you know, uh, conditioned to the, the Disneyland la la <laughs> type of, of uh you know, marriage that's that they want to take place that what that they want to take place, man. But you got so many distractions and things of that nature. And I'm not talking about for me. I'm good with mine, but just with all the stuff that relationships have to to go through today, with social media being a more, the, one of the main reasons, bro. Like you got so many distractions and 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 shit pulling pit families apart. And women are incentivized to leave, and men ain't being men no more. And men ain't going so. To are you no are you worried? Are you worried at all that like one day? Let's say 10 years from now, things are obviously improved up to that point, obviously, because people like you and I believe in, uh, you know, incremental gains. So every year we get better, mm -hmm. every year our business grow. So 10 years from now, you're obviously going to be 10x to what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. Are you afraid that like one day your woman may just say, ah, it's better for me to get out of here? No, absolutely not. It's just. So we, we, let's do it like this. It, 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 so if you were married legally, mm -hmm. nothing would be different between you and your woman now because she ain't gonna leave, and y'all not gonna have to worry about the the. the, the I, that's that's what I would hope. That's what I would, <laughs> that's what I would think. But you know, but you never know. Things happen. But my yeah, my yeah. Main, my main issue was that why would I participate in something I disagree with? Yeah, you know what I'm saying, like regardless of what happens with us like i i, I can say i know she's not gonna leave but she still may leave or i mean shit, shit happens yeah. you know what i'm saying um but just bro like the uh the institution of marriage the 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 the, the way it works is to penalize the men how it's presently constructed bro it's just a way to suck the most money out of men possible why would i support that say why would i tie myself permanently to the worst extent to something like that where I could, you know, create something better. Yeah, but I tell you what, um, 
you know, one thing with the marriage is that it has a dueling perspective, right? Mm -hmm. It has a protection involved and it also can F you, yeah. right? Because if you're married and you do really, really well and you and your wife are together and she go, look, I want this young dude over here on the South side. And she take you, she get the kids, yeah. she get half of all the money and she living off your money with a new dude. Mm -hmm. A part of it is that a, a father has a greater defense to have some level of connection with his kids if there's a marriage, because then it shows that it wouldn't be in the best interest of the kids to yeah. not be involved with a father in that situation. That's one thing I'm not concerned with with my relationship is if something was to happen between my girl and I, she wouldn't keep me from my, my children because she knows how much of a role that fathers play yeah. in their lives. And women are stupid for doing that, keeping you, right. you're, you're messing your kids up, keeping the fathers away. My, I know she would never do that. Um, but what about the child support? Because that's another thing that killed men. So whether you're married or not, if you split, yeah. and you know, she, you know, I, I met I met your woman. She's yeah. incredible. Mommy and my wife. Mm -hmm. um, if y'all split, then if she want to be petty, yeah. you know she saying? could. You got she two. Could, I'd have to you got two of them, bro. Yeah. And there ain't no it. cap in California, <laughs> bro. There ain't no cap, bro. They you, they they'll run that child support up as much money. It's, it's, it's 2023. It's not 1960 no more, where you have one income, the father paying for everything, and then you know he up, ups and leaves, and the woman now is lost. You can't do anything. Yeah, we yeah. don't live in that life no right. more. They haven't they haven't they haven't made changes to the marriage system to accommodate to where we, we are now. Like women are just as powerful as men now as far as, you know, careers, opportunities, things of that nature. And the marriage law doesn't treat it the still doesn't treat it that way, especially with kids and things of that nature, man. So like if that was to become more fair, if it looked more fair to me and and men weren't as devastated as 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 they were from it, then I would, you know, entertain it more but it's, it's just a, you know I, I even though i'm involved in it and i like had this faith that like me and my wife would be together forever um but like i can see how it's a government money grab yeah i wish there was a way to get married without the government right yeah, meaning yeah. that you could be officially married and it's and it's recognized through the church mm -hmm. and that's an official legal document mm -hmm. which, which probably is it's probably, probably the case, and I just yeah, don't know it. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to be to go through the government to do it because what happens is the government is going to make money on all ends because you yep. have to pay for a marriage license. Yep. So you have to pay for the marriage license. A lot of people are tricked into having this big old crazy wedding where they throw all their money away on that. But then when you get a divorce, if you and another person ain't like, hey, let's just write down on a piece of paper what you want, what I want, let's agree, get it notarized, and be done with it. What they, what the government can make money on is that you have to go through a process to even annul the, the, the marriage, to make it a non-existent thing. There's documents, there's, and then lawyers get involved and they have a, they have a vested interest to run you through the courts so as, as long as they can. And it get dirty, bro. Yeah. Like I've seen people, it get dirty, bro. Like, and they make the man pay for everything. They make the man pay for his attorney, her attorney. They make the man pay for all that shit more times than not. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's why. But but I, what I will say is for for men out there, is regardless of the marriage status, I, I advocate to get married. But regardless of that, you got to make sure you're with the right woman, bro. Yeah. Because, you know, I have a twelve year old, mm -hmm. and that's all I'm saying. Yeah. And and and, and it, it can become difficult mm -hmm. because you 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 go your separate way, you go move on and have another life, and you happy. The other person not always happy about that, and, and they may feel some type of way, and they gonna come after you. As I said yesterday, the most important decision a man can make is who he decides to knock up. Right. That's it. A hundred percent. The most important decision a man can make is who he decides to have babies with. Um, and I think men, but I think men don't. They may not realize that. Like a man may think my greatest investment is a property. Mm. My greatest investment is a, is a business venture. No, it's legacy. It's your greatest investment is your freaking legacy. And you could either create a tremendous legacy that will overshadow, like your shadow will be cast mm -hmm. so greatly that, you know, generational wealth will be created. Your family name will be established. Um, whether you progress as an individual in the lifespan that you have, will be a, a tremendous factor. If you marry the right woman, are you with the right woman that supports you, that got your back, that believe in you, that empower you, you know, you become 
so much greater. You with the wrong woman, bro. Or multiple women. Or multiple women, bro. You, Because let me say this, bro. I mean, I think you experienced it. Because me and you ain't, you know, we ain't virgins, right? Yeah. I mean, and, and then we ain't been married our whole life. So, yeah. bro, ba- juggling women is a, is a lot more stressful and counterproductive to success as, for a man than just having one solid woman that's down for you. Bro. That's a fact. But that comes with maturity, though, man. That comes with maturity. Like, um, I'm, I, I believe in, like, <clears throat> I don't know. It's all different, but getting out of, getting out of your system, sowing your oats as much as you can, because the reason why I'm so confident in being committed to this woman and, and not looking at other women is because I've been there, done that. I know what comes from that. And it's instability, it's, you know, stress, it's, uh, it's just, not good, you know what I mean. It's, just, it's, 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 it's not good, but I had to go through what I've been through to be where I, to be where I am now, man. And like, I, I really think you know having a, a solid one and becoming a father is like probably the most important things that have happened to me outside of YouTube and stuff, man. Because my YouTube was hopping before I had the kids, um, but like when you become a father and you got someone that's relying on you, rocking with you, it causes you to fucking go on overdrive, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, yeah. like yeah. so. Is you thinking beyond yourself, and it's just a, a a dope pocket to be in, which is unfortunate when I look at it large scale because men are in such a low spot right now. They're they're not motivated. They're not out here getting it. They're not like how how can you find yourself to how how can you come in a position to find like a solid girl if you're not where well, you need to be to even right. attain that girl. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then to get a girl to look up to you, mm-hmm. to respect you, to admire you, gotta really come with your shit. I, I'm dumb. Stop cussing. Nah, you you good. Um, you really, you really got to have your stuff together. You know what I'm saying? But like most men right now are not able to accomplish that, bro. And then yeah, I agree with you a thousand percent. And then the modern woman is confused too. So we we both are in a confused state. Yeah. Young men don't know how to take care of nobody. They don't know how to take care of themselves. Nope. They don't know how to have the responsibilities. They're not brave. They're not courageous. They're not bold. They don't know how to lead. They 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 don't understand that. You know, when you are in a family structure, you got a woman, bro, you got to lead. You, you can't be passive. And But then women, they aren't as traditional because they don't want to be sitting at home because they feel like it's disempowered mm-hmm. to be only encouraging their men and, and supporting men. So now they want to go out and do things. And then a lot of them have an unrealistic expectation of the man that they will marry. Unrealistic, bro. Right. These chicks. And, and, and I used to think it was just like, Fresh and fit in some of those shows. No, that's real life. They like only get the dummies. But bro, you ask the average woman, you say, if you can pick a man, what would you want him to be like? They, they, these women will say something like, either he has to be taller than me, or he got to be like six foot or, or better. And then you can say, what kind of money you got to make? And they ain't saying fifty thousand a year. Mm-hmm. They got uh, at least six figures. You so it, it, you want him to look good? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you want him to be handsome? You want him to do be, all that. Be you want faithful. Be faithful. Yeah. Have a uh, be a leader. Yeah. Have a great attitude. Yeah. Lady, you looking for a unicorn? Facts. Because, and I'm not saying men like that don't exist, right? I, I feel like I'm a man that have a lot of those qualities, but like, that's one dude. Yeah. Y'all got y- y- four hundred thousand women want one guy. Yeah. And and to be and, and and then y'all don't know how to get that guy. Mm-hmm. You think if I got a big booty, I'm fine. I know how to got got 3000. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Somehow mm-hmm. I'm going to get whatever man I want. No. It's not how it works. A man want peace. You can't be on OnlyFans and think you're going to get the man you want. You yeah. get a man on OnlyFans. That's not how it works. I always say this, you probably oh, I say dick does not mean dedication. Right. Women get that confused. They get that confused, man, like especially now being in well into my 30s, bro, the the the, the, most, the most attractive the more attractive a woman is, if I was single, the bigger headache she's gonna get. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what type of validation she's gonna come with, entitlement she's gonna come with, bro. Like, you know, I, I fortunately I got a, a very attractive woman, you know what I'm saying, to rock with me, man. But like, you don't wanna deal with the the the, the headaches of having these beautiful women that just feel like all they need, all they need to do is just look pretty and provide what's between their legs. Like, right. what what else can you provide? Outside right. of that, right? You know what I'm saying? You know how to motivate me? Can you empower me? Do you know how to provide peace? Do you know how to be quiet? Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, do you know not how to be a, a man? You know what I'm saying? Like, 
we just in some weird times right now, bro. We're yeah. in some weird times right now. And it's I can't blame the women either because they're it's just it runs hand in hand to like the black experience, bro. They're 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 born into it. They walked into it. You told on music, movies, shows that you're superwoman. You're my you're the model. You don't need no man. I'm a boss bitch, this, uh, I, this, that, and the third. But at the same time, you want a man to come to, you want a man to come take care of you. How does right. that work? Right. How does that work? How does it work? <laughs> you can't be a, you can't be a boss and, 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 a, and a maid at the same time. They like they want they want a man to like beat them down in submission. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's yeah. not how it works. Yeah. You, need, you need to come with that energy first. You know yeah, they like, uh, I need a man to know how to handle me. Yeah, like, like, no, that's an argument. I ain't trying to fight with you. <laughs> ain't nobody, I'm not a dang, I'm not a dog whisperer. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm not handling you. You know, yeah. my, my thing is, I, I'm married, so we, you know, we, yeah. we, we good. Yeah. We ain't even in the, in the field no more. But like, I just wish that young people would, would acknowledge and understand these things. Like, look, don't set yourself up with a twist. Young ladies, like if the man that you want don't want no stress, man. Mm-hmm. The man that you want is probably they like, I want a man to make a million dollars a year and he do this. Girl, he ain't gonna be at home a lot. And I'm not saying the man gonna cheat on you. It's a good chance that some men that you want most like of them that, will. Most it, of them will. Because they got too many options. Yeah. But for the most part, you gotta understand he ain't gonna be up at the house under your under your arm all day. He out there grinding, he out there working. You have to be a woman that's secure. You can't be insecure. You can't be bugging them. Like my wife don't bug me, bro. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I can, I can be, it. huh? She know you out here getting it. She, she know what it is, yeah. right? She, she want, she want to live a lifestyle. She want us to have nice things. She know I gotta grind to get it. This ain't yeah. no, this ain't no uh, charity. Mm-hmm. We, we, you're not just getting it because you feel like you should get it. You gotta, yeah. get, you gotta, you gotta grind. My wife understand. I leave at seven in the morning. And I come home eight, nine o'clock at night, yeah. most nights, mm-hmm. you know, um, because I'm getting it. And then one day we'll be on the beach somewhere. Yeah. But right now I got to get it. But my wife ain't stressing me, bro. I come do my stuff, three hour radio show. I go smoke my cigar and she already know what it is, you know. And, you know, but, but my wife, she she loved me enough that she concerned. Like mm-hmm. she came up here the other day, mm-hmm. like me and my COO was in here smoking cigars. And it's like, I'm thinking wife sleep, bro. It's mm-hmm. like 12, 30. Mm-hmm. Me and him just chopping it up. Left my phone in there. Me and him over here looking at the warehouse, mm-hmm. you know, visionize and stuff like that. Bro, we probably was talking for like 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. So it's now like, I mean, I think the time ended up being like 12, 45. So we were, we were talking for like 12, 15. I go in there to get my phone. Wifey in the, in the truck with the baby. Yeah. I'm like, what the f- she like, she pulled up. I called you. I was worried about you. I thought something happened to you. And I look back. I'm like, you got the baby yeah, too. You yeah, tripping. Yeah. But you know, my, my, my wife loves me. She appreciates me. But she also let me do my thing yeah. and, and empower me to make the family work. And she got to, man. That's how it works. That's how it works. If, she, if you at the house with her, you can't get shit done. <laughs> it's, it's counterproductive. This is how it works, man. But, um, well, no, women need to know that, bro. But peace, yeah. peace of mind. Just be chill. That's chill. It. No drama. Yeah. Nobody want to argue. None. You know, it's funny because you know my first situation, my first fiance. Um, you know, I don't think the concept was in her mind. Like y'all was young. Too. We were young, yeah. man. I was twenty three. She was twenty one. We had just had a baby. We weren't even in a serious relationship mm-hmm. at the time, and she was still trying to find herself. You know, I, I didn't know myself either. You yeah. know what I mean? And it, it, that concept wasn't, and then, you know, we would be back and forth for several years after that. Of course, we had a kid together. And she used to always uh, kind of like look down on the fact that I wanted a woman that was submissive. Like, she like, oh, you just want thought a woman. She was, I thought she was weak. Yeah, like, like, like yeah, like, she, that's, a, like that's a weak woman. Yeah. And it's like, no, like, I don't want to argue with you every day. I don't want to argue with you who wearing the pants in this family. Like. You got to understand, you got to respect me as a man or yeah. I'm going to leave. Yeah. Um, it, it ain't that you want a woman that's weak. A woman that's submissive uh, make a man feel loved, bro. I dated a woman because, you know, right after that relationship, you know, I had a serious relationship with a girl. She was a school teacher. And, bro, she was like, let me cook for you. Let mm-hmm. me do this. Let me do that. It made me feel loved. Make bro. you feel like a man. Make me feel like a man. And it made me feel like she trusts me. And she and she believe in me, and I and I, and she's putting on me to leave, yeah. and I ain't got to argue about. Mm-hmm. Okay, we need to do this with the family. Like my wife now, we moved from because she lived in California, I live here, but then my lease was up here, and I said, hey, I went to California with her because she still had a lease and she's mm-hmm. still working on a job, and I said, let's, hey, this is what we doing. Like we we together now, we gonna move back to Arizona. Yeah, and she cried at first. 
And, and because, you know, of course I wasn't making that much money either. So she yeah. was really, but she trusted yeah, she me, bro. She confided in you for real. Yeah. She trusted me. And, 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 and her believing in me made me feel like, okay, I got to get it. Yeah. Not only is she believing me, I then took her away yeah. from yeah. Yeah, you put the California. Now yeah. I got to get it. Mm -hmm. I ain't got no choice, you know. Yeah. It ain't no sitting around hoping and praying. It's yeah. like, I got to grind. So. Yeah. I know, man. That's submissive. And submissive is not a bad word. It's not. No. It's not bad at all, man. And that submissive woman gets whatever she wants. At whatever. Whatever she wants. Bro, I know <laughs> I know you treat your woman like me. Like, wh whatever you need. Yeah. I'll go to bat. I'll work 24 hours a day for a month straight to get you whatever you need mm -hmm. and want. Mm -hmm. My wife say, baby, I want to go buy this. I don't even think about the price. I'm like, I guess I got to work harder. Yeah, I yeah. guess I got to go grind. Me, yeah. me and Nick over there, we got to make some more videos this month <laughs> because I don't want my wife to go with that. I want my wife to sit up and put her feet up on the on the thing and for her to just be able to chill. be a mom yeah. and, and chill and not have to worry about nothing, bro. I deal with all the finances and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I, don't want, I want my wife to be like a queen. Bro. Yeah. She ain't got to worry about nothing. Yeah. She ain't got to worry about defending herself. She ain't worry about nothing, baby. You what you need. Here the money. I make the money. Here's the card. Yeah. You had to quit spending much as you want on that yeah. card. Yeah. Yeah. Within reason. Yeah. Know? Yeah. I'm glad I got a wife that's not like a super spender. You know, she do thrift stores and stuff, but, but you know, she understand what it is. Bro. Yeah, man. And then it's just it's the 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 duality of it. Not duality of it, but just the the yin and yang of it. Though it doesn't make any sense, bro, because women want to all women want to be in that space right right being taken care of right but they're being lied to and you know they're shooting themselves in the foot moving this way yeah like you want this but you act this way yeah modern feminism yeah, is strong bro. Women. yeah bro. but bro we we could talk we could talk yeah. for about all, three hours bro. <laughs> i gotta have you back man I, yeah. I gotta come out to where you at yeah man we oh, gotta, you gotta tell we gotta, them to, uh pull about uh about the fight too bro oh yeah the yeah, fight yeah. let's yeah. talk about the fight bro let's <laughs> hold on bro i thought we were Hold on. <laughs> we need. All right, we they good. We'll get. Let's talk about this fight, bro. Yeah. This dude, and I don't know his name. You probably know his name. Ch this, uh, Chase Demore. Chase Demore. That's yeah. his name. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> this so this dude challenged you to a boxing match. Yeah. So so not like a street fight, but yeah. like a like an official professional boxing match. No. Yeah. So you got to talk to me about this. Let me just give you my first impression, and then I'm gonna let you take it. I was just watching your channel one day, mm -hmm. and I seen you and your girl laughing at some dude boxing, right? And this dude was the trashiest boxer <laughs> I ever seen in my life, bro. I couldn't believe my eyes. The dude was punching with two hands like this. Yeah. The dude is punching down like this yeah. on top of people, doing this. And, and y'all laughing at him. I'm like, I, I'm thinking this is like a like a skit, yeah. like somebody yeah. fake boxing. Yeah. And then later I find out that the dude then got on social media and challenged yeah. you to a fight. Yeah. And mind you, I don't box. I don't box. You know what I'm saying? We gonna box April 21st. But it's like, you said, buddy is so trash that like, even though I'm a, I'm such a novice at boxing, I know I could beat his ass. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like literally, bro, that's like the worst boxing performance I've ever seen. You've ever seen? Oh, bro, I ain't never seen them. I thought it was fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but homeboy, his whole persona is, you know, I, I'm questioning like, is he is he like serious, or is he or is he like a cloud chaser? Man, I don't know if it's genuine or he's trying to sell it, because I, I, I don't know Buddy personally, man. But I haven't seen him. I haven't seen anything outside of this. This delusion he walking in thinking he the greatest to ever do it. He says that I'm the greatest to ever do it. I'm the modern day Ali. He's oh, called out Deontay Wilder. He's called out Deontay Wilder. Yeah, he's called out Deontay Wilder. He's called out Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury. Yeah, he's called out all these fools, bro. So I'm like, bro, you got to be insane. I guess it's a good. I guess it's a good marketing strategy, right? If you if you can get enough buzz, the dude look built. But get enough buzz to get your ass moved? But, but, but you still make money. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. He's still, like, you, you look at all the people uh, Deontay Wilder fought, yeah. knocking them out in seconds. Bro, they still made money on that. Yeah. And so this dude don't care about getting knocked out. You, you see his fight, Literally. the one that y'all was talking about, bro. He, he definitely don't care about getting embarrassed. Mm. But he figured if he sell enough tickets, get knocked out, you know, he just yeah, move on to the next club. He got to be cloud chasing, bro. Cloud chase. 
If y'all y'all on there, if y'all ever seen, go look him up, man. Chase yeah. the Moore. Chase the Moore. And it, but April twenty first is the fight. I'm I'm fighting him April twenty first in New Orleans. In New Orleans. Yeah. What, what's the what's the what's the uh, the promo? The fight. It's called. Uh, um, uh, the zone is cut is running it, but misfit misfit boxing misfit is, boxing they're, they're throwing it. Yeah, is that like Jay Paul and them thing or mm-hmm. something? It's, uh, this is KSI. KSI, yeah, thing. Is, okay. KSI is mis, misfit boxing man. So it should be cool, man. It's like celebrity boxing, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um. The the the, the main card is a uh, Le'Veon Bell. A Le- yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's fighting someone. I think uh, Jay. And I'm not sure who he is. Because he fought he fought Adrian, Adrian Peterson. Peterson and knocked him out. I know, bro. Agent Peterson a beast, but yeah. I guess. Yeah, but boxing Le'Veon got some skill. Like boxing is different, bro. Boxing is a little bit of like, bro. You can be real strong. You can be buff or whatever. You can be tough, bro. But you gotta have a little bit of, you right. know what I'm saying? You gotta be able to and dodge. Your, you gotta be able to, have, you know, be be athletic. You if your, yeah, if your cardio is not where it needs to be, you just out there you can get your ass. Beat. Right, bro. That's the biggest thing, yeah. bro. That's the biggest thing. I was telling my wife when I was yeah. I was thinking about you. I said. I said, bro, ain't no, it ain't no question that Stevie can knock this dude out. Bro. <laughs> I, I, I feel like, I feel like this the this dude is the worst boxer I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's pretty. In the last fight he fought, I don't know how they got him just knock him out. Maybe, yeah. maybe because that dude was like, that dude wasn't really with it either. But he was being nice to him. This dude was out of shape, yeah. and his skill level is bad. Yeah. But I was thinking like this. I'm like, man, dude, I will knock that dude out, but. You got to get in shape mm-hmm. because people don't understand boxing. They don't understand fighting, bro. You can gas out in the first like minute and a half. You can bro. gas out in the first twenty seconds if you ain't careful. If, if you really gunning, you yeah. adrenaline, mm-hmm. and you ain't been cardio, cardio, cardio. Yeah, you don't care how good of a fighter you are, bro. Yeah. You'll gas out. Yeah, if you ain't got and, no energy. It's and, a wrap. And, and, and you ain't gonna be doing <laughs> this like this oh. dude. <laughs> This dude right here, bro. You are still, you know, maybe you yeah. he slow like this, yeah. man. But this dude is just yeah. doing like he playing a little machine, bopping people on the head and shit. Yeah, bro. So, but anyway, man, April the 21st yep. in New Orleans. New Orleans How did it, where did they go get tickets at? Um, I'll leave a link on my, uh, we'll put a link my, in this yeah, video yeah, too. In the video, but on, on both of my channels, uh, Night Talk and Stevie Night, I'll leave the, the links there for the fight. So that's to actually show up. Um, I'm sure, like the week of the fight, they'll have the links to like tune into the stream. The stream, yeah. yeah. And then after that, the day I'm, the day after, I'm sure to be on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm gonna so. do a review of it, man. Yeah, so, bro. That, yeah, that dude, man. That yeah, dude, bro. It's gonna be crazy, bro. It's gonna be crazy. Your first yeah. fight. Yep. I swear, God is my witness, bro. When you drop this dude, <laughs> he gotta quit. He gotta like quit. Bro. Yeah, he gonna call out Tyson Fury right after that. Tyson Fury, bro. <laughs> I mean that Wilder. I think Wilder is even crazier than Tyson Fury. Mm-hmm. I think Tyson Fury is just a he just too much to handle for for Deontay Wilder. But yeah. Deontay Wilder is like an assassin, bro. Yeah, he got them paws. I mean, I seen that dude fight, bro. I mean, and when he first started, he was yeah. knocking dudes silly, and I'm like, that dude rangy, bro. Yeah. And he he come from back here, mm-hmm. boom, man, Brown's and, and haymakers, bro. Yeah. And, and dudes can't even not even on his level, bro. Yeah, he beat him in the seizures. And this dude, dude, yeah, he he, he hurt one dude. Mm-hmm. I mean, I saw him on the interview crying about it because mm-hmm. the dude was like, he he messed up for life. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, but you know, yeah, bro. This dude right here, you finna. I mean, I, I just have if I had to be a bad man, bro, I put the whole house. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it though. But uh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Where, 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 what else? Where can people find you at as well? Um, on yeah, media? my social medias, my night talk is is uh like my more political commentary channels where. You and I know each other from. Yeah. Um, my, my, I have another channel where I cover music. It's my Stevie Knight channel is my, based on my name, and Knight Talk is from my last name. So Stevie Knight YouTube channel, Knight Talk YouTube channel, and then I, you follow me on um, Instagram, Stevie Knight. And I think that's all I got. Yeah. Also, awesome, awesome, yeah, man. man. Well, bro, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, yeah, man. man. We yeah, got, I got to have you back, man. Yeah, Two hours of freaking yeah, wasting our time yeah. trying to set this stuff up. <laughs> uh, next time it'll yeah, be we good, We got it man. done, though, bro. All we right, all right. Done. We out, man. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I put out three videos a day, so make sure you go to the uh, playlist that says new video and watch more videos. Subscribe to this channel. Let's go, baby.